Number one was definitely a lot of fun. M5 just, you know, absolutely crushing. And uh, we'll have to see uh, how it works out from this game. We saw Corky doing very well in that bottom lane. And so, um, I don't know, we might, I'm not, I'm really curious what we'll see because we might see a Soraka ban as well. Soraka, uh, you know, just giving that kind of a heal and whatnot. I, I, it'll probably just be Jax, to be perfectly honest, just because <laughs> Jax was just so strong in that last game. Well, ja Jax is a monster, but only if he gets fed. Otherwise, he's just a guy who just jumps into the middle of team fights and goes, hey guys, how's it going? And then just dies. But, you know, because we had such a superior farm and killing ability up top lane, and we managed to shut down Udyr, because that's the thing, you know, not only do we get Jax fed, but... Udyr, he really needs that sustain, he really needs to get tanky, he really needs those items, and when you deny him top lane, he just, he becomes useless. Oh, so they actually do ban the Soraka, so now the issue with Soraka that game, obviously, is she is part of what contributed to how, you know, strong Jax was, and she gave them a little bit more lane control bottom, but the heal with the armor buff, uh, and then also the ultimate just made Jax, uh, un, you know, stoppable much yeah. earlier than he normally otherwise would be, where they would have had enough burst damage to kind of take him down, so... Um, that's definitely a good ban, and now you don't have to ban out the Jax. Uh, I would be kind of surprised if you know we saw that now, though it, it is always an option. Yeah. Um, we'll probably see something. Uh, more, what did we see the bans more, last more time? Art, more Ash than anything. Yeah. But we actually we're gonna stick with the Warwick ban. You know, it's, it's you know, Warwick. He's a pretty pretty huge pain in the ass to deal with sometimes. Yeah, and, I mean his his early game is very strong. He's very easy to pick up kills, and then his late game he's just kind of an unstoppable tank, and so that's always a concern. I'm kind of curious. Um, you know, I, don't, I, I can't remember for the EU teams how many of these EU teams have been playing Nautilus and uh, if that's something that's been more localized to the NA uh, or the, you know, EU, but regardless, he is always going to be a strong pick. We have Ari Morgana and Urgot, so the same bands as last time for M5, and right off the bat, we have that Nocturne pick. So uh, Nocturne this time going to EXHCL is just so strong, but Jax and Lee Sin, and I know for a fact that Jackson Lee Sin actually combo very well. Uh, obviously the shield on Lee Sin does very well, but it's really strong against physical damage teams. You already have the dodge on Jax. Now you have the attack speed slow on Lee Sin. Um, you know, they can kind of jump together and just be kind of friends. And I, I've done uh, <laughs> Jackson Lee Sin before where you can just two man Baron like or very early in the game, like around the 20 minute mark, you just two man Baron and you have plenty of uh, regen and damage to do it. See, now, now she said that, I can just imagine like Jax and Lee, I'm, I'm imagining like some like some webcomic now, like Jax and Lee saying, it's like, oh, super bros, bump fist. Yeah. yeah. Working together, teamwork. I, this, you say that, and this is the first thing. That's the that truth of it. That's, it is, that's, though. You know, it they really run is. around and kick ass and take names together. And, and, and the best part is, you know, they're mixed damage, too, because, you, know, right. you know, Jax is a hybrid. He deals a fair amount He does amount a lot of, of magic, yeah. He does quite a bit of magic damage. So it's just, like, you know, just super threat. You got Lee Sin. He gets in there, initiates with, you know, with the Q, gets close, and then, gets in with, yeah, and then you can just have Jax follow up with a leap strike. We got the slows. We got the stuns. And it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a sandwich of pain right there. That's what that is. And I, actually, you know, I, now I'm thinking also like a Rift Myth also even. Can we get like a Jax and a Lee Sin, like up, one of them up on a ledge? If one of them leap strikes, and if, if, if Jax leap strikes and if Shen, I don't know, Lee Sin shields, like simultaneously, will they swap places? Now I'm wondering. I think, no, Lee Sin goes to his target. So Lee Sin uh, would go to wherever Jax ends up. <laughs> I, uh, they would I, probably stop at the middle, actually. I think they would stop. I think both of them go to their target. They, um, they I'm stop, not positive. They stop in the middle and hug. Right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we do see, <laughs> we have the Nocturne pick again, you know, for EXHCL. That gives them a little bit more map control, um, does give them some nice fight control, and they can have that initiation advantage. But then picking up Varus, and yeah. so this is interesting. Uh, they were maybe concerned that M5 was going to take Ash, and so uh, Varus versus Ash, actually, it does very well. And so Ash still has the range advantage over Varus, but because of the burst damage that Varus has, and he still has a pretty long range. So, you know, particularly with the Q, he outranges Ash with the Q easily. Um, he can do very well, and now uh, you also have the ultimate from Varus, and so Jax and Lee Sin trying to come in, it's kind of like Ash, you, you know, throw off that ult, throw off the AoE slow, um, is going to be very good, and then having Janna to protect for him, but a kill lane bot for uh, M5, having Corky and Alistar is going to be extremely aggressive, and that's just a lot of damage that will be tough to deal with, though I, I would say generally Varus has enough range where he will be okay. Yep, and also not to mention, you know, if you go in for a backline champ, like Varus or Urgot or Kogma, one of the best counters to it is Nocturne, but HCL, they got on, uh, they have it on their team. But 
Jax can clear a lot of space. Lee can clear a lot of space. Corky can clear a lot of space. They all have very, you know, lots of movement available to them if they want to go and zero in for those kills. Plus, if we get the initiation from Alistar, Flash, Pulverize, we can be in a very good spot. Yeah, and so what we'll have to see, you know, what EXHCL is trying to do right now, picking up Yorick. So um, a little bit concerned, you know, with how Udyr did last game. Yorick actually works very well as a counter to Jax. Yorick can just basically shut down any melee champ uh, in lane. He has the regen. Very quickly, the early levels will be very difficult for Jax. And the concern is obviously one, if Jax starts snowballing in that top lane, then all of a sudden he's going to be unstoppable again, and there's not much that York can do because York doesn't scale as well as Jax, obviously. But, um, but, but early on, he does have the damage in region. But we could also have a switch. We could also see Jackson in jungle, Lee Sin go top. So at least Lee Sin can mitigate some of that damage. He can shield himself from the harass. He has a little bit of innate lifesteal, and he can always just, you know, throw down the uh, throw down Tempest and just get extra damage on the Wraith and just scare him away. Yeah, I think we'll probably be expecting to see... Um, you know, Jack's going top though. You just you want to get that farm and uh, get him to that late carry potential. And with how well it worked last game, um, it just makes sense. One thing that they could consider is uh, sending York down bottom, but I, they're really just going to send York yeah. top. And against the kill lane, he would you know kind of struggle. But the big thing is um, York does counter out those melee champions, so he can try and get an early advantage and shut down Jax. Um, It'll be. I'll, I'll, I'll be watching his abilities because a lot of times you see York level up the E early for the regen. But against a melee kind of uh, character, having that Q leveled up more gives you actually a little bit more damage and doesn't consume as much mana as his uh, E ability does. We've been seeing a lot of Janas being you know too far out in front, getting caught, pulverized, headbutt backwards, feeding free kills to the enemy AD. And Janna, I mean, Janna's a great support. Don't get me wrong, she can disengage extremely well, but... She doesn't really have many options for herself. She can only do so much if the enemy is right in front of her. Yeah, and so we actually see Veggie was able to see them as they're coming in, so he knows they're invading his blue. He was safe for a second there, just keeping that front line. Wants to back Ooh, off now, and so he is going to be caught by Ghost Pepper, actually, and the quick burst damage, they're able to drop him down, but they are oh. all very low. We do see Ghost Pepper going down, and now the rest of the team is chasing after Darien. If they get the quick kill on Darien, that would be huge, but the flash, and now Kiki's still pursuing. He wants to get off that E. One more attack would do it, but he doesn't quite have it. Pop and Gregor, uh, Gregor coming in onto Diamond Prox, getting some nice range damage with the Qs, and there it goes. So we actually have uh, two kills going down for EXHCL, uh, even though we did have the first blood coming on to Fizz. So it's like we had the first blood go to Fizz. But then two kills for Karthus. Two kills for Karthus. Let's, let's, uh, I want to see the gold difference really quick, because I want to see how much... You know, so Karthus, 1k, Fizz. So we got two K lead, uh, 200 gold lead on Karthus, getting himself a Doran's Ring. Fizz is also getting himself a Doran's Ring, but look at this. Karthus also has, because of that extra gold, got himself two wards. So now we're going to be, you know, Extra, we're going to be protected pretty reasonably well. We can put those wards down. We can put it. We, we can. I, I can already see one ward more than likely being put in front of uh, M5's wraiths, just so we can swoop in, go ahead and steal them, and you know the other one just for whenever we need it. Yeah, and so we saw um, actually Genja and Ghostu Pepper picking up the race. So uh, it's a little more common to go after the golems, but the race will respawn in time for Nocturne. Um, might be a short wait, but it, it should be there just about the time that he's getting up there. Uh, and so, you know, it will be fine. He could actually just skip for the red buff, so getting that quick double red, um, that quick double buff, so he does have to wait a bit for the race. But even so, I'm curious, I need to check what the gold and uh, experience difference is between the two, but having the uh, the AoE damage with both um, Varus and with uh, Janna, they can pick up that advantage. So, you know, we'll see how that uh, compares. Yep, so we got uh, Varus now doing what he can. Bot lane, we'll see us very soon on. We actually got some aggressive warding uh, down <laughs> on both ends here. Super Ace and Ghost of Pepper have both warded the enemy brush, but we see that uh, right now the XHCL is pushing a little bit uh, for the time being. Darian back up top lane on that Jax. We saw how well that worked last game. We also got the Tornadoes here keeping, uh, keeping Gregor safe. But yeah, if Darian... We'll see how he does against, ooh, very well against York so far, actually. Look at all of that burst we were able to get on so very early. The, you know, the, the ghouls, they can only do so much. And we're getting a little bit of health for Jen back onto Kiki's because he's using, he's leveling up his E first. 
more, I hope I hope he's leveling up his E first so he can just go ahead and take care of all that burst. But hey, we'll see how the win comes out. But right now, Darian's actually looking pretty well. Yeah, but, um, you know, we do see the slow wear down from York, and that's what he wants. With the regen advantage, uh, you can trade a little bit of burst. We see Alex Itch starting the dive, and actually Karthus missing the wall there. Um, so, you know, missing out on some damage, but right off the bat, just a huge lane advantage for Fizz. And actually, uh, almost Darian, getting a kill bot on Genja. Top line, Darian's actually in a whole lot of trouble here. We got the Ignite going down, and just will manage to get it. Let's go back. Let's take a look at that real quick, because Darian here is way too out in front. We're getting actually really low. Just, you know, York is straight up auto-attacking him. We got the slow from the ghoul. We'll keep him there just so we can go ahead and get the Ignite going. That's all we need. Yeah, and that's how much damage you have from York early on. And the lane control, um, obviously going to be very strong. Alex Itch, once again, just jumping onto Karthus. I'm just doing a quick little fast forward so we don't yep. miss anything, but uh, <laughs> can get back to regular, regular game time. But um, yeah, that's, it's going to be tough. If, if York can continue to control that lane, and if Karthus can start to hold you know, his lane, then uh, very quickly we could see you know, this game moving into EXHCL's favor. Uh, we do see Ghost of Pepper coming down, though. Um, you know, we'll try and get in on uh, Varus and Janna here, but they are very safe in this lane. Can farm from a distance. So now uh, Alex, Alex has burned his heal already. I believe we burned it. You know, in that initial Yushin fight, so it should be back for him relatively soon. At which point we can once we can even, we can start to harass. Uh, Karthus even more so. Actually, if you look at Griggle's mana pool, it's actually uh, it's starting to dwindle a little bit here. So uh, hopefully we'll you, know, you can last for another minute or two, so we can go ahead, we can give him blue, we can stay in the lane for a little bit while longer. And Alex is actually been doing pretty well for himself. 29, 29. So farm is pretty even. They both have early Doran's rings because of those early kills. So they're, we're gonna we're gonna stay we're gonna stay here in mid. Or for you know our first uh, first few engagements a little bit longer than you normally would, but Alex he's going up around the back. We're getting raised like, hey man, you see this little trident glowing? You do not want to be going near me. And so we have a couple of creeps stolen by Dominic Prox, going to try and get that advantage. Uh, so far, we see uh, Yorick, you know, getting that regen, so he has the range spam onto Darien. Um, you know, we'll have to see what kind of mana items he decides to go for. He is actually building a fast tier, so that tier is going to give him the mana pool he needs. But we have Ghost Pepper coming onto Gregor, nice. gets the headbutt into the wall, and then the pulverize. The ignite goes down. He will have to get out of there, and they will be able to pressure them out of this lane. Though they aren't able to get a kill, it will result in a farm advantage for oh, them. Oh, but no, Diamond Prox is here. We got oh. the Q, and the kick will be enough. Gregel's just sticking a little bit too far out. You know, Lee Sin, he's very mobile. He can do stuff like that. If we were actually behind the tower, taking a little bit of refuge, we could have been, like, just out of range of that Q. But nope, he just says, like, oh, man, I'm weak. I got to get out of here fast. But when you do that, you sometimes put yourself out of position. And so now here's the thing. Uh, Nocturne knows oh. that Fizz is 6, knows he wants to engage, so he wants to kind of not allow yep. that... We had the ultimate going off. That would have been a kill for Alex Itch if Nocturne hadn't been there, but he didn't want to go uh, down with you know the the ship. Um, so just backing off for a second there, and that's what we were talking about. Nocturne trying to help Karthus mid. He does have the range farming, and if you can prevent those kills on Fizz, uh, then you know maybe you can do well in the mid game. Nocturne is not five yet. Diamond Prox is actually a level behind, but we do see we have both of the junglers have been spot out. They're both in the same area, but Veggie is here. We get the Q. Alex does actually Q on over a little bit to safety. He is feared, but now here's Diamond Prox trying to help out a little bit. Ghost Who Pepper is nearby as well. Flash is available. We could get the Flash Pulverize if we really need to, but you know we don't need it. Uh, Diamond Prox is there getting the kill up onto Nocturne. Yeah, and so it, it's difficult for Nocturne to kind of engage. He didn't really have the follow-up with Karthus. Karthus was kind of low on mana and whatnot, so not quite able to grab that kill. And Fizz is very safe early on. He's just, you know, great at dueling. Uh, we see a nice chunk of harass going off, you know, with the cues from uh, Gregor. Ghost of Pepper coming in here, going to just be <laughs> able to get out. But, um, yeah, so far pretty even, but Fizz is definitely controlling the mid lane very well. And with that Sheen, he's going to have just uh, even more burst damage, and it's going to be very difficult for Karthus. Uh, if we start seeing dives with Lee Sin, maybe Lee Sin comes in behind, Dragon kicks him out so that mm -hmm. Fizz can get in range, and then he has plenty of killing potential on top of that. I do also want to note that I look at the, the damage potential on Varus. We saw Alistar start walking back into the lane, and Varus just, just, just done you know, a few auto attacks in the ability. We actually managed to take about a third of health off of Gosu Pepper. So that's the damage potential he has 
already. Imagine how much damage we're going to be dishing out in about like five minutes from now. Should we get you know free more items? He can actually get his uh, attack speed boots and go from there. But we actually have this ever getting in. We're going to get the pulverizer. We got the ult actually going down on Genja. We got the Karthus ult. More like going to be able to finish him off. And we got Ghost of Pepper here retreating away. But you know, what? hey, we actually uh, Super A has actually got the kill on the Corky. We could have given that to either Varus or Karthus, but you know. Kill's a kill. Kill secured. We're good. Yeah, it seemed... You saw uh, Varus actually attack a creep there, and so I don't know if that was um, a mistake from, you know, misclick, or if he was just trying to give the kill to Karthus. Just make sure that Corky was in the kill range and allow Karthus to get that. And the big yeah. thing is we talked about how Karthus needs to get into this game Whoa, uh, for the... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought he was coming down. I thought he was coming down, but now they know they're wise to it. And it, it, was, it is warded. Uh, Dragon area is worse. They knew Alex was in the area. Right. Wisely backing off. And we did talk about how Karthus needs to get into the game in order to have that control against Jax and against all these, you know, melee champions. So I wouldn't be surprised that they did feed off that kill. Um, you know, they do have really good burst with Varus, and that's one of his strengths. He's got the range to rest, but he also has that combo of burst. So being able to pick up oh, that kill, Nocturne but we actually have Nocturne. Out. Oh, Alex is trying to get all the damage he get, but he actually used Playful Trickster to farm creep, so it wasn't up immediately, but he's trying to get the kill and actually manages to get out of the AoE after getting the kill on the Karthus. Yeah, just really impressive play by both Diamond Prox and uh, Alex Itch, uh, able to pick that up. Um, so you saw, you know, the quick burst from Lee Sin combos very well with the shield, and obviously. And so they just didn't have enough damage to deal with Fizz. You saw Karthus trying to bait him in. He knows every time I get, you know, close enough to Fizz for him to jump on me, he's going to because he yeah. wants to get off that damage. Uh, he wants to wear me down. So using that to give an in initiation opportunity for Nocturne, but Lee Sin watching mid as well, knowing that Nocturne's going to sit around mid. And so now we see uh, Diamond Prox coming in here on Dragon with Jax as well. Right. So. Uh, Jax came down from the top lane, will miss out on some farm, but we saw it last game, and they are going to be looking to control this dragon. Lee Sin and Jax, we said it before, the Super Bros coming on together, taking out that dragon. You're going to do be able to do it pretty quickly, too. There it goes already. So now we actually see them. Now this person, Darian, is going to go ahead and get back up to top lane. We've got a little bit extra gold here for M5 as well. That's always a good thing. And Alex, once again, continuing the pressure in mid. Going back to that last fight, though, I don't disagree with the engagement from EH EXHCL, though, because we saw... Oh, we actually can get another ult. Can we actually get a quick kill out of Mr. Gregor again? He does have to flash out. He is ignited. Heal is not up for Alex, though. Yeah, and the flash was able to dodge out of that uh, E. The, the landing on the Playful Trickster probably yeah. would have had enough damage to do it. One more auto attack would have done it. But one thing that's interesting is, you know, we talked about the control that Yorick has over Jax, and uh, Darian doing a nice job of you know, farming and just not really being in lane. So he knows, all right, if I'm just going to sit here and allow him to harass me constantly, then I, that's at my disadvantage. So he's yep. running around, uh, coming down for dragon, going into the jungle to steal creeps, coming back up when the lane is pushed. But we have the Ghost of Pepper headbutt into the pulverize under Gregor, getting some nice harass off to there. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of bursts, and now we have the teleport in from Mr. Gregor coming onto Corky, going to have a lot of damage there. The ultimate is up for Karthus if he gets him low enough, but Gregor going down very quickly. The headbutt for the disable and the ignite, and now Fizz. Alex oh. Itch is coming down. He's going to be uh, wanting some kills. He's going to grab one onto Karthus. Can Gregor grab this? Actually, he does. So now Nocturne turning onto Gosu Pepper, and we have a three for one exchange for EXHCL. Wow. I mean, that was a little bit of. I mean, there was a little bit of. A, of a, well, actually, no. Mr. Gregor teleporting down, trying to equalize the fight. Good call, and we forced a lot of that. You know, the moment he came in, there's like, hey, Karthus is here. He's a little bit pushed out. Maybe he should be a good target. Maybe he's the next one we should focus. And. Then all of a sudden, three members of M5 are down. So, I mean, he had the AoE. He's right there in the middle of the fight. We had a little bit of a juke trying to get out of the bush, but you know, it was enough first. And now we see Darian going in on Kiki's. We're forcing the ult. We're mostly going to get the kill, but the ult, Darian's at half health. We're not going to be able to do a whole lot with this. We're going to yeah. be using the ult to farm. And now Darian has weathered the storm. He is up to that point yeah. where Jax takes over and, you know, can very quickly uh, burst down. Yorick just has so much damage output. It doesn't matter. The regen is inconsequential and so uh, now you know he can maybe start to zone Yorick out of this lane because he will be able to farm very successfully there and so the key is to keep uh, Karthus farming and if Karthus can still be farming then they you know have a shot but uh, very quickly Jax could become unstoppable in this game. Not to mention that uh, Varus down bot lane one one and five he's helping out yeah, that's he's helping true. out quite a he's been a part of every kill right now for EXHL except for one it's, it's, he's doing pretty good for himself, and we got Alex now coming, now getting a little bit too far out. Veggie comes in with the ult, we get the initiation, quick kill. And wishing him, I think it's a, a moment like, man, I wish I had Flash.
Yeah, and that Nocturne pick, just having that kind of map control, is able to protect them from the aggression of M5. So now they do have the bottom turret down. The concern is that M5 is allowing it to push, so um, they might be able to, you know, freeze that lane a little bit later. But uh, trying to continue the push, EXE at HCL around the map. They know right now uh, Jax isn't up to optimal potential, and they can't really fight right now. They want to stall us. So let's just team fight and constantly and push down these towers so we can get those early advantages. Let's get these towers. Let's get the objectives. They actually dampen document procs. They should get it a little bit too far out. Will we actually see something with this? We got the key coming from Benji. We got the spell shield. Can we get the fear off? Yes, we do. Mr. Griggle should be able to get connect with this. One more lay waste. No, actually. We're actually going to start walking away because Genja is here with, as Corky dealing out a little, as much burst as we can, getting some more missiles, getting some more damage. We actually have M5 re, uh, re establishing their presence here up in the mid and Genja now in the middle. Pulverize getting three members of EXHCL. And uh, right now, Veggie does go down, feeding Genja a kill. Yeah, and so not only is Darien farming successfully in this top lane, uh, but, you know, we do have the fight control from Fizz. And that's yeah. the thing is uh, Fizz, with how strong he is at this point in the game, can control into that late game. And so that's the goal is to, you know, win the early fights in order to allow Darien to get involved in this game. And then, you know, that Darien-Lee uh, combo, uh, once they have, you know, Diamond Procs, the shields onto Jax, it's just going to be so difficult for them to, you know, control Jax in those fights. Um, and they're, they're still going to have to deal with Fizz. And so Fizz is always going to have that burst potential. Um, and it's just going to get worse to be able to dive onto like Karthus or Varus in these fights, burst them down, and now, you know, win the longer fights with both Jax and Lee Sin. Yep. I'm also realizing now how much of, you know, how perfect Alistar is for this kind of setup. Because, you know, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of melee range champs. Ghost of Pepper is just going to be all right along with them on the front line. It's like, hey, I'm going to get this pulverize off. And since you guys are all airborne, all of our guys are going to get a lot of free straight out burst damage on all of you. And we saw that in that last fight. He goes in there. We got the pulverize on three members of EXHCL, allowing them to get their quick kill. They chose Veggie, and he went down pretty quick. And we actually, just looking at some of the skills, Varus maxing the E first. So I actually usually max the Q, but uh, E is definitely strong. And having that Hail of Arrows, that AoE, yeah. has worked out very well for him so far. And then uh, Alex Itch. Rather than getting the damage that you get from W or the burst that you get from Q, maxing the playful trickster first. So getting that cooldown reduction so he can be more survivable early on, um, you know, has done very well in the lane with that, is able to dodge, you know, the wall of pain and whatnot. Yep. And uh, I don't know, the big concern is how are you going to shut down Darien? And right now, EXHCL, they want to just continue pushing you know, just not allow him to get involved in the game because he can start doing this and just jumping oh, onto yeah. Kiki's gets off the stun. He might even tower dive this because he's just got yeah, enough the damage. Down. We're committing for it. Darian, can we get the lead strike? One more hit. We should be able to do it. We got the ult just in time on Kiki's. But again, Darian, he's a little bit too healthy. We're going to get away from this. Mr. Griggle may not be able to do too much. Oh, we do have the wall of pain. Okay, correction. We may actually have something here. But the thing is, though, we needed help from our AP mid in order to do it. And now because we have our AP mid displaced and our top dead. But he, he gets <laughs> the teleport down bottom. His teleport yeah. oh, was up. Are. And so they will be able to engage on this. Alex Itch jumping onto Gregor really quick, bursting him down, but does go down himself. Gregor dropping, so they grab the Varus kill. And now Genja is up along with Lee Sin. They are able to control this fight very oh, quickly. They have enough damage. They have enough burst. We have Karthus being forced out. Doesn't go down. Actually gets the flash over the wall, but they're able to grab Nocturne. And now they are all up. And it is the chase. Genja should be able to this grab will, this. There, there it go. is. Perfectly timed Valkyrie and Missile. We got the shield. Will we be able to live? Yes, just barely. And you know what? Let's go for Dragon still. Why not? Genja, go ahead and take this thing. You can take this, right? Let's do it. So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful team fight control there from, <laughs> from M5. And, you know, and even that, like, we also burned the uh, the Karthus hole, but yeah, that was, their, that was their trigger. We saw two guys up top trying to take down Darien. It was like, okay, we got a little bit of a displacement here. Let's just go force some Dragon. We forced the teleport in, and all that team fight control there, it was just clean the floor with them, plus Dragon. Yeah, and right now we see the build for um, Karthus. Let me check out how much gold he has. Uh, 1450. So he does have, you know, the three Dorans. Gives him a little bit of health, but not as tanky as he would be with the Rod of Ages, though it is a little bit cheaper. And uh, we'll see if he's trying to build into, like, a Rabadons or something. Um, getting that early, you know, Rod, it, it seems likely. But... Uh, I don't know, regardless, he is still going to be extremely squishy, and so there is always the threat that they can just burst him down in fights. Um, you know, Yorick is getting stronger, but obviously Yorick falls off as the game progresses. 
he really is just there for the slow. So he has the slow on Jax that they can kite in fights, and he has the ultimate right. uh, for Varus, so they will have the ultimate for that damage. But the, he can't even lane against Jax at this point. Darian yeah. can just zone him out of this lane um, and continue to farm into that you know late-game Jax beast that we saw last game. Yep. So I mean, right now, I mean, when we do start hitting these team fights, ideally, I would like to see Kiki's actually ult Varus, you know, relatively early on in the fight in anticipation that he's going to be focused down first, though, that we didn't get the most out of it. But, oh, Darian being focused down here, we got the fear. He does walk away for a little bit, but Diamond Prox here, we got the we got the two dudes here. Can we focus down Veggie? He is being ulted, so if they kill him now, he will be a ghoul. Can we wait for it to end? And we got it. It ended. Veggie's a little bit... Uh, He's looking for revenge, but it looks like M5 is going to be able to walk away from that one once he... Oh, Alex is here. We catch him out, but, you know, Veggie's going to be going down soon. We might as well check, make sure he's nearby. Kiki's, though, could be in a lot of trouble, but Mr. Gregor is here to make sure that doesn't happen. Playful Trickster away, and the Q. Clearance, that's a lot of movement, man. We can get away from most situations, except, you know, when we were caught out, you know, 3, 3v1, 4v1 in mid. Yeah, so really smart play by Veggie, like you said. Um, you know, he is going to go down, so checking for some ward advantage. He knows he's not going to get any kills or anything. Uh, but we do see Genja and Ghost Pepper able to zone out this bottom lane now. The double buff is gone from Corky, so he loses a little bit of that killing potential, but he's still very strong, and now they will be able to take down this turret. Um, they left up the top turret, so I thought they would just kind of push that down, but uh, we did have, you know, the enemy team there, so everyone just kind of recalling, comfortable with taking this 4k gold advantage for M5 and just mm -hmm. continuing to pressure them with it. And, uh, yeah, the, the difficulty is how are they going to burst down Jax? Once again, they faced the question last game. They face it again this game. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how they try and uh, negotiate with that. They have, you know, like we said, the Varus pick works very well against Jax. He does have the slows. They can kite Jax. Um, but if they can't, you know, take him down, then uh, he can just run rampant through those fights. Yep. And, you know, I like, I like keeping the top tower up because right now, you know, Kiki's is just really useless right now. And the longer we can make That's him useless, true. and the, if we can make him even more useless right now, we got a two-level advantage here up on top lane. That can definitely deserve to be wider. And also, the more we keep York up top lane, the less, you know, we, we're not going to have his ult if we have is facing, you know, 4v4s on the rest of the map, which means we're not going to have an ult on Varus, which means we're going to have a lot less damage out. But because he's not with us, he's been reduced to an ult and a little bit of just target practice here for Darian. As we can see, he doesn't even, he gets to half and he can manage to kill him outright. Yeah, he, he, he really can't lane against Jax right now, so he needs to stop trying at this point. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, keeping that tower up does allow Darian to farm a little bit more. Now he is going to be comfortable with dealing some damage to it. We do see Alex Itch coming down here, jumping over the wall. So seeing mm -hmm. Varus down here, he's going to try and come in from behind, and that is going to be very dangerous because we have Nocturne as well. So he actually throws off the shark, but is able to juke out of it, so he does dodge it. The uh, flashback and then the ultimate, they quickly burst down Alex Itch. He is able to get out of it, but the fear grabs him, and now Genja going down as well. Yeah. So really nice control from EXHCL, able to bite, bait it out, and that's what they've been doing all game with that Nocturne pick, trying to bait out these fights. Mr. Grail now also finding out Ghost of Pepper and Diamond Fox. They were on their way down to help out with the fight. Looks like they might just get caught out here. We got the flash away from Ghost of Pepper, but Mr. Grail is still in pursuit. If we can get a wall, but he actually is exhausted. We got the wall, but the rest of the team is not here to capitalize on it. But we may actually just get Ghost of Pepper on the lay waste, and we do. And Grail does manage to pick that one up as well. And are we going for Baron? We might, uh, be, we might be. So here's the issue. Jax and Lee Sin are both up, and they are going to be very strong, but Karthus can kill Baron very quickly. They have a lot of damage with both Karthus and Varus. They're two yeah. of the faster you know, killers in the game. Janna going to throw off the ultimate to give them some regen, but uh, if Karthus is going to be low on mana, uh, he should be probably fine, but Nocturne is very close to going down, and so they're probably going to dive in on this. Darren uh, is coming in. We actually get the dive in on Veggie. Will he go down? Yes, he will, but he was ulted by York, so he'll be coming back, but York will be also be going down himself. Diamond Prox and Darren, they're focused Focusing down, they have a target in mind. It is Karthus. Will they be able to get? But Darren actually does fall now. Diamond Prox is in a full retreat. The Nocturne Ghoul does go down, but we managed to keep them away from Baron. We got the tornado from Super Ace, keeping them away. And Diamond Prox, oh, we the, get shield the shield with the kick, with the kick on the Varus. And Alex just comes out for the follow up and gets that kill. And now Super Ace is caught out. Alex playful trickster and the shark. Ah, you could have just let Earth take it. Yeah, and so <laughs> with just the two of them, Jax and Lee Sin, they are so strong right now. Uh, they were pretty low. Nocturne was low, and he was low on mana. So just able to run right into the team, get a co couple of quick burst kills, and now this has resulted in a free Baron for Moscow 5. Um, and with that Baron, 
Jax is actually going to respawn in time to grab it. So, again, getting the Baron, and they're just so strong at this point. Just like last game, uh, they have reached that final, like, late-game snowball stage. Um, and it's just going to be so difficult for EXHCL to deal with. You saw, again, the Lee Sin and Jax combo uh, able to keep each other alive, have that burst damage, you know, to work out. And now they can push down mid. They, you know, because they have a short range kind of melee team, Karthus can stall a little bit along with Janna. They can clear the creep waves. But outside of tower range, at Moscow 5 is king. They can just sit there, take the dragon. They can take your buffs. Um, they can just kind of force fights in your jungle. And so Moscow 5, they want to split push and get multiple lanes pushing in order to, you know, pull EXHCL out of position so that they can continue to pick up these kills. Yeah, M5 right now, they're just, they're, they are just such a swarm of melee range chances. If they, if they get in, if they find a target, they're they're dead. So right now, EXHCL has no option really but to group up as a full five hint hint Varus, you need to get with your team. We need you for the damage to help defend this. So it, and it's now we just need to see if we can't wait on the Baron buff. Mm -hmm. M5, once again, very healthy gold lead. We've rendered uh, HCL's top lane pretty much down to an ult here at this point. If you know we get the, if we get the ult on the Varus or uh, onto Nocturne, we can start. Damage output is still pretty high, but. We have a lot of burst available to us on M5, and we're trying to get something here on Diamond Price. So uh, a little bit too far. We got the fear, we got the exhaust, and we got the Janna ult. Actually, kind of help keeping him away. But Veggie is here with the ult to try and finish up on it. But he does get shut down in the process, and he does die to tower. Can we actually get away? Genja should be able, just barely gets to safety. And Mr. Gregor here, you got the ult. Will we actually get Genja? Yes, we do. And I'll just go back a second because I, um, you know, missing the fizz coming in here. But we have, they're all diving here. Uh, Karthus does go down, and so Karthus will be able to pick up the kill onto Corky, but then Alex Itch going to be cleaning up, and so he does have enough damage to take down Varus here really quickly wow. with that burst. And the entire time that they're deal doing it, we have to deal with Jax pushing down this top hey. lane. And there's the split push that we were talking about, because you Bad. saw Karthus and Varus, they're able to stall out the push. Um, they're able to just sit there and, you know, clear out the creep waves, so it makes it difficult for M5 to push into the base. But because of how strong they are in these, you know, small team fight situations, M5 can just, you know, split their team up, and then it's not an issue, because they can just control those fights. And Jack's actually maybe going to dive on Jana here, uh, the rest of the team coming in, so probably not a good decision. We'll back out. I, I'm sorry, but I always do see, like, I always consider it hilarious whenever I see a Jax procking uh, the ult like, onto a tower, just whack, 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 especially when he has a lot of attack speed to see it two times speed. It's, it's, it's hilarious to me. Just... Yeah, anyway. yeah, no, his passes are really strong, and you know, late game to have as much damage as he yes. does. Um, he's clearly not as strong as he was last game, where at this point in the game he was looking at a uh, Warmogs. Now he's only got an Aegis, so, so now but he's, he's still to help extremely, the team. he's he's still extremely tanky and just has a lot of damage output, and that's the issue with Jax's. Well, the thing is though, this game he hasn't spiraled as far out of control right. as he did game one. But we're also recognizing that a lot of members on our team were very merely he's still ranged. Spiraled pretty far. He's though. still he's still not as far as game yeah. one, but we're still spiraling pretty far out. But you know we got the Aegis, actually double Aegis. So actually get, we have that see Lee Sin. You know we got we got the bros going on here. We we got a lot of mutual protection from the both of them. So we're, we're a very melee oriented team. We're going to need a lot of protection up front in these team fights. Even though we are so far ahead in the lead, but we just want to go ahead and continue to secure that. And he's once again top lane pushing like a boss. And so just to poke down the tower a little bit, we saw how much damage M5 was taking. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of difficult for him to push down. So as a result, just leaving Jax down here, he's perfectly fine on <laughs> yeah, his own. he's good. If they don't come and stop him, he will be able to take this base turret. So as a result, the whole team has to back off, and this is going it's to allow be gone his team... They get there. Yeah, it's going to allow his team to take down that mid turret. So he's going to be able to grab this. He's still probably going to be able to like 3v1 them as he jumps <laughs> on the Kikis. He is going to pick that up real quick. Actually, the flash from York. And now he's jumping over on the Karthus over the wall before the fear engages. But now Gregol and Super A is coming in. And how long can, can he, he survive? Away? He uh, does go down. He does go down, but we have a tier 3 down. And M5 is still continuing to push in mid. A little bit of a suicide tactic there, but you know, once again, they're so far ahead of me, just don't do it again. But well, we got Fizz trying to get as much as he can on the Varus, but we got the York ult going down there, so we have a little bit more extra damage in this team fight. You know, HCL's looking okay, but Alex is able to get away with that playful trickster. So you know, their initial focus is a little bit in a mess here, but we got the Karthus ult. Will it be enough? Play <laughs> playful trickster is so unfair. 
<laughs> yeah, really nice dodging there, uh, getting out of the Karthus ult, but now he's got the threat onto Karthus. Can he pick up the kill? Genja very close to going down, dodging around a little bit, and Alex Itch close Waiting to going down as well. Yeah, uh, Diamond Prox will be able to make, pick this up maybe if he hits the Q, but the Yorick Ghoul's not allowing him to get the angles that he wants. So uh, an even exchange of kills there um, does allow them to hold out a little bit longer. Playful tricks are so unfair, man. Karthus Cole could have gotten that, but no, nope, I'm just going to flip over. It's, you know, you know, no, no, you're old. It's no big deal. Let me just, let me just do my E. It's no big deal. But now, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the ult, um, it is a pretty short cooldown at this point in time. So we'll, we'll have to see, you know, whether or not that can stop their pushing. But because the tower is down in the top lane, if we do that split push again, maybe they don't want to. Maybe they want Jax to just group with the team and, you know, be able to tank like he did, but with the team there instead. Uh, but if they decide to take that split push, it'll probably result in an inhibitor this next time. Yep. Um, but we'll have to see. I think M5 will probably want to group now. They don't want to be giving up any more kills uh, and, you know, don't allow EXHCL to get back into this game because Karthus and Varus both have a very strong late game. But, you know, right now M5, they have about a good minute to, re you know, to get the positions they want, to push the lanes they want because Baron should be coming up, up pretty soon. But there is a naked inhib, and right now M5 is actually pinging, they're pinging out the naked inhib up top lane, I think that might be a signal for someone to try and go back door it, but we actually see Veggie being caught a little bit too far. Trying to just get some coverage, try, wants to get a ward down, want to make sure we get vision. That's the only ward right now the EXA Shield has even remotely close to the Baron area, but they know. M5, they're all up in their business. They're more, they're more than likely going to be taking that path once they start heading up into Baron, but we see now Darian, he's looking to push top lane, he wants to get a very healthy wave going, and we actually just see them force the decision on EXHCL. It's either we're going to be doing Baron pretty soon, you can either defend your inhibitor or try and challenge us, you know, make that's, a decision. That's why I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see an Oracle's on the Gosu Pepper, and so um, they know how strong they are right now with Jax, and they want to be pressuring uh, both Baron and this top tower but they don't know that there's these wards. So, you know, they are spotted. Obviously, now that they've moved out into the minions, EXHCL knows what's going on, but there's not really that threat of baiting him in. The concern, maybe, is that Karthus is very strong in those confined jungle corridors with all of his AoE, and with the Wall of Pain, he'll be able to catch everyone in yep. it. And because we have, you know, such a heavy melee team for M5, the Wall of Pain, it gets them all to stack up closely, uh, and that that's definitely going to, you know, hurt them. Then you have the Varus AoE and the Varus Ultimate coming in, but uh, they are going to back off for this Baron, and there's no ward on the Baron, but there is a ward over on this bush. So if they well, decide they to bait in that bush, there is a threat, but they can do Baron at very high health with both Jax and Lee. I mean, even then, Jax and Lee can just do it by themselves. The rest of M5 can just be out on front door. We got the Shirelias being popped. Nocturne ult going off. Who's going to focus? Not really a whole lot of people, but Genja out there. He gets focused on way too quickly. Kiki's is going down here, but we got the ults. The York ult coming in on Mr. Gregel, so we're trying to get a little bit more AoE damage down there while we can. Varus does manage to get the kill out onto Alex Itch, but you know what? At what cost? And Mr. Gregel, you're you're just a you're just a ghoul, man. You can only do so much. Ult not gonna be doing a whole lot either. It's just a it's a scratch at this point. We could do Baron. Actually, we're gonna have three members of M5 do Baron. We're gonna see Darian in the mid just pushing down tower because we don't need all of M5 here to do this. Diamond Prox and Genjo, we can just do it on our own. And Darian's just gonna be pushing up the mid, taking down this tower at the same time. Yeah, they're just so strong right now. They're too tanky as a team for uh, EXHCL to deal with. So you saw in the smaller fights, EXHCL getting a couple of kills here and there. We're able to do pretty well, but J Jax, they have no way of stopping him. They have no way of stopping all of their combos. They're just There's too much damage and too much tankiness. So Darian actually just tanking the tower. Yeah. He doesn't even care. He no will want to get out of there, um, <laughs> but they do have the Baron. I kind of thought that they should have come down and taken the inhibitor. Because uh, the thing is, they don't want to fight at the towers. They can fight at the Baron. It's out in the open. That's where they're at their strongest. So they could have taken the inhibitors and then forced Baron once again. Uh, but, you know, the Baron will make them strong enough where it will be almost impossible for EXHCL to deal with them. So that's obviously never a poor decision. We've got two naked inhibs right now for M5. They can just go ahead, pick one, swoop in, take it real quick. We have the DPS to do it. It's not going to be too much of a problem. But now, you know, we have an option. It's like, okay, where's, where's HCL? We're just going to go to wherever they're not and go ahead and take that objective. We still do have a tier 2 in bot, and it looks like now we're just going to go ahead and pressure that because we got Veggie. We got Vision on Veggie now. He's way up in top lane, so they know if they get everyone down here in bot, they will not be able to defend a tier 2, and more than likely, he may not even be back in time for to defend a tier 3. 
Yeah, and so he just wants to get kind of a push going so that they can't really quickly push in on this inhibitor. And the concern is M5, they're going to come barreling down this bottom lane. And once they push up to this bottom lane, they're going to want to transition from bottom to mid and then to top. Having the minions out there, you know, they won't have the slight minion advantage, but it really doesn't matter that much at this point. M5, obviously with the turrets down, uh, can just walk up and take those. So, you know, we'll see. They might even just split push in because they know how strong they are in small fights, but it does open up opportunities like this as we have the fear going off onto Genja. They will be chasing. They are very strong right now, and Fizz coming in behind them, but Gregol going to be wearing down Gosu Pepper. The ultimate keeps him alive for a while, and now we have Fizz incoming Alex. on this fight. We got the ult from Fizz. Actually, whiffs on everyone. Earth is not going to be doing a whole too lot in this uh, in this team fight here. Gosu Pepper, he's in the back. We really recognize he's going to be Fierce, so we know, let's just go ahead, headbutt. Pulverize, see what we can do, try and keep them away. Kiki's is now out in front, trying to get the slows, trying to get all the damage we need. Goes to Pepper, he's out in front. He just wants to keep that Oracle's alive. He wants to keep that Baron buff. We got another headbutt, more Pulverize in. Super Ace does use the ult to try and clear away, and we actually do get the kill on Alex. But Genja is out and back, trying to get some damage while he can, and goes to Pepper. But hey, look at the Super Bros. Take it down <laughs> the inhibs. Yeah, and so they, they will tactic. get two inhibit inhibitors for this. Um, it did result in a number of kills for EXHCL, which probably didn't need to happen, but at the same time, it was a very safe play because they knew, all right, well, we're, we're either going to win this fight, and they did almost win the fight. They were slowly yeah. wearing them down. They had the Corky AoE. As they were kiting, they kept on throwing that Corky AoE back at them, and then slowly they were able to pick people off with Fizz. It didn't quite work out, so they did go down. It was a 3v5, obviously. Right. Um, however, it, the resulting play was an inhibitor, so being smart, you know, they they recognize, all right, well, we're, we can have this fight. We draw them out of the base. It doesn't matter. Even if we lose this fight, we win. Yeah. So, you know, with the two inhibitors <laughs> down, now they can force them down in this bottom lane. And the fact that they have a weak pushing team doesn't matter anymore because of how strong they are. And because they have two inhibitors, they can just wait out EXHCL and uh, allow EXHCL to just lose by the push. See, that's, that's I like that quote you just made there. Even if we lose, we win. That's how far ahead M5 is right now. The fact that they can go ahead... 3v they can 3v5 3v5 pretty decently you know support ad and their ap and we just have you know darian diamond prox just go ahead and do whatever the hell they want to and see darian once again he's pushing the lanes and we're just grabbing all the objectives we need is there there's such a commanding lead right now 20 20k 18k, 18k. It's near, very, it's, it's yeah, it's just, it's too, it might as well so, be 20k. It might, and it might as well be 50. <laughs> and so it's it's just it's going to be so difficult for them to kill anyone. We see Karthus, he has the Rabadons for damage and he has yeah. the realize so the slow will be nice. But even so it's just not enough persistent damage. We need Varus to be able to take down uh Jax, but unfortunately everyone is going to be diving Varus on these fights. And oh, yeah. if they can take down Varus um, then That's very it. quickly, you know, yeah, there's just not enough damage to deal with them. They will be able to sit down, hold them in the bottom lane, and while they freeze them here, the top and mid will push. And then if they decide to engage, you know, M5 has the clear advantage right now. And like we said before, you know, M5, they're more, more than capable of 3v5ing effectively. Alex, we also got a Guardian Angel on Alex Hitch right now, so that's essentially making any team fight he's in when you're getting this, you know, what's one more... That's one more member they have, essentially, because he can just stay alive and burst so well and deal all the damage he needs to. So now you see them just clearing the creep wave. They can, they can just go straight in and tank this if they really want to. Ghost of Pepper, he has his ult up. He can just go ahead and take the brunt of it. And we should get a whole bunch of health uh, started here for Darian as well. We're not going to... We're not, we're not going to see multiple war mobs. We don't even need it. We got the gun blade. We got all the sustain we need. And here we go. We got the Nocturne ult coming up, reducing the vision we need. But we're just going to go ahead and focus down Diamond Prox. We'll actually get the ult in here on Darien uh, as well. But he's in the back, taking the turret. He is exhausted. So his, his damage output is just a little bit too low. He's taking the turret for the rest of his team. While, yeah, while HCL is getting cleaned up, Veggie's the last man standing. But you know what? He's a ghoul. He's going to be going down. But you know what? We just want to make sure, hey, we know you're the undead. Get on out of here. And now we got the tier three down bot and the super minions pushing. That's the ace. We should be seeing GG and the Nexus going down any moment. And yeah, there so it there is. it is, the surrender. surrender. M5 taking game number two, 2-0 against EXHCL.